Hi right, guys, this is me from Getting The Mix. I'm here with Sam from Pioneer and we're looking at the new SB3 um, controller that's been recently released. Hey. Hey. Alright, so... Obviously this new controller has come out on the back of the very popular SB2 that was kind of reigning supreme. Um, so I just wanted to get a bit of a lowdown on this new SB3 that's come out. Um, you know my stand questions, first thing I'm going to ask you is, before any intros, mm -hmm. is it IEC, is it plug-in, is it, how do you, how do you power this thing? So, um, within the pack itself, you get USB, mm -hmm. and it's straight USB to your laptop, and this is how it's powered, so there's no need for an AC. Nothing like that? Nothing like that. So I plug it straight into my laptop, and I'm good to go? Yeah, straight Except away. Except with Windows, of course. No? Drivers? Uh, no, the there's no need for any drivers. Because I saw that, but I thought that was just for Mac. Yeah. No, honestly, the, the Mac, Windows, no need for drivers. Plug and play? Plug and play, straight in. Okay. Very simple. So, okay, so physically the two look the same size, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that at a quick glance they look identical, you know. Um, outputs and inputs, are those all the same? Is it? Um, no? Yes, to a point. I mean, it's got um, balanced RCA out. Okay, yeah. Um, we've got one microphone channel mm -hmm. uh, with a level for the microphone. Right. Um, size wise it's the exact same size as the SB2 which yeah. I thought was quite important mm -hmm. you know I, th I quite like the size Popular of it yeah. Factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah we wanted to obviously there's quite some some significant upgrades from the SB2 but we kind of wanted to keep it um, noticeable if you will that we, yeah. we've not shied too far away from the design yeah, yeah. Okay. so you know we've got the left deck the right deck the mixer mm -hmm. section in the middle we have added different pad modes here which we'll go into a little bit mm. further on. Okay. Um, it is four deck. You've got volume control for deck A, deck B. Mm -hmm. Nice cross frayed in the middle. We've kept two filter pots here. Um, high pass and low pass or low pass, mm. high pass, how you see it. Yeah, so like I said, there are some similarities but I definitely believe, you know, this is quite a substantial upgrade to the SB2. <laughs> oh, and did they take the red off the platter on purpose? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know, it's good question, good question. <laughs> um, I think the jog wheels from looking at it here, it might be a little difficult on camera, mm. um, but if you come down to the store you'll be able to see them. They do, I mean I don't know from your, from your opinion, I think they definitely look a little bit more professional. Yeah. These, um, sorry, I'm just to scratch <laughs> something on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, you know, they're, they're a little bit toyish. Yeah, a little bit toyish, you know, and they yeah. feel great, you mm -hmm. know, for, for digital jog wheels they do feel really nice. I'm going to presume it's Serato, but you know, tell me, tell me about the software. Yeah. So the um, so the software that's included, um, it's a free software. It's it's quite new from Serato. Well, I say it's new. It's an upgrade from a previous software that they've brought out. The new one's called DJ Lite. So this is designed to work with Serato DJ Lite, which is a free software, and it's it's very basic, but it's it's so good because if you're just getting into the industry, mm. it's so easy to understand. You get your head around what it's like for controlling software in front yeah. of you. Okay. So that's the free service. It does work with the new Serato Pro as well, the new update, um, but that's obviously going to be a paid license key. Okay. Um... And can I map it? Is it MIDI mappable? Yeah, well, you know, it's it's a MIDI controller, therefore, within Serato DJ Lite, mm. uh, you are limited to what you can do with it. Right, okay. Because it is a, like I said, it's a free software service. Mm. It's to get people interested into the Serato um, um, family, if you will. Mm -hmm. But when we get to Serato Pro, um, yes, it's MIDI mappable, you can change things however, you know, you can really um, personalize your controller. Mm. So it, it, it does it, what, what software does it come with? Does it come with any in the box? Yeah, so, well, no, it comes with directions within the box. Um, mm -hmm. So Serato DJ Lite doesn't require a license key. Serato DJ Pro does. You don't get a license key for Pro. Right. That has to be purchased off serato.com. Right. Um, but there's, there's, um, there's, there's instructions as of how mm. to get you going. I mean, you really don't need it. You yeah. Go to serato.com, download Serato DJ Lite. It's literally Good plug in you. Rodney and that's it, you're yeah. going. So the, you'd say there's enough in the intro software to get to know this controller. Most um, definitely. Yeah. Could yes. I record on this? Um, not on Serato DJ Lite. Um, mm. The record function, um, 
you're going to need the Pro. Pro. Yeah, so so just to touch base again, the DJ Lite is, you, you, you can use everything that you see here within the controller. Yeah. However, when it, when it comes to more, um, but thing, things like you record, you know, you you mapping. If you want to change settings, etc., it's it's that's when you're going to be upgrading to yeah. a Serato Pro. To the Pro. But because you've got DJ Lite, it gives you an interesting mm. view on what Serato is about. Okay. So, what's the audio interface like on this? Like, what's the quality? So it's the it's the 24 bit 44.1 kilohertz audio interface, um, which. For the SP3, it's the exact same as part of all the DDJS ranges. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so I'm, so not, I'm not. There's no levels. It's not getting lower down the range. When no, no, no. Like you get the same same yeah. quality mm. as you know some of the more expert controllers. All right. Then I want to. Um, so I've looked at it a bit, and uh, I noticed that. You know, I, I always ask the question whether both you know headphone ports were mm -hmm. there too here on the SP2. Well, on the SP3. They've taken one of them away, haven't they? Yes. So uh, say we've we've taken the quarter inch jack. Yeah, um, the big one, the standard the, one. The standard one. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, the SB3, just as much as the SB2, mm. um, it's very entry level DJ controller. Right. This is to introduce you into DJing. Mm. Yeah. And the functions here are very, you know, basic, and it's there to help you progress as a DJ. So therefore. If you look at our headphone ranges, yeah, yeah. you know, we've got a detachable quarter inch jack. Mm -hmm. How many times have, have you lost them? I, I lose them all day. the time. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's I don't think it's something for a, a buying customer of this product mm. It's gonna be worrying too much about. Right. So we would rather have the 3.5 inch so you've always got headphone capabilities yeah. than the, the problems that we've yeah, had as DJs yeah, yeah. over yeah. the years. Yeah, that's fair enough. I want to ask you, I noticed even though everything looks kind of very similar mm -hmm. they've changed the placement of the tempo faders mm. um, you know just from you know just a gentle step barely yeah. noticeable I mean there's the if you if you look mm. and like I said guys looking on the video if you can't see um, sort of in depth with the controller make sure you get down to to the store and have a look yourselves but I mean if you if as, as we're sat here now mm. if you look it's more organized if you ask me the sp3 is very much more organized so the tempo fade is here as mm -hmm. it is here on deck one deck two mm -hmm. as you're going to find it on controller ranges as you go further and further up well, okay. so okay. you're if you go for the sp3 and you're learning on the sp3 mm -hmm. when you go to let's say if you you know if you grade yourself to the head for mm -hmm. example this is going to be the same layout Right. So yeah. you you know you we're not the, the, I think the the SB two has a little different layout and mm. some people can find that quite confusing if you ask mm, me. Okay. You know. Is that two? This one's two separate components. They're almost exact. Yeah. It's yeah. you know it's it's mm. almost almost as if there's a mirror in yeah. the middle. It's mm -hmm. two exact components yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. I can see how that yeah goes way up the range. All right. That makes sense. Another thing. Obviously, this was very popular before the SB2 because it had you know four deck mixing mm -hmm. you know um, have they carried this on over on the SB3? Yeah it is four deck mixing um, use it with even, light? yeah even on DJ the Serato DJ Lite okay. it's four deck mixes it's it's accessible through DJ Lite mm -hmm. and it's also accessible through um Serato Pro. Okay cool um, so I suppose the next thing I want to know is same number of pads Mm -hmm. different icons and different buttons yeah. so you know talk me through these uh, yeah you know. okay so well, i'll tell you what then we'll start up here on the uh, top left hand corner with the effects so these are your your beat effects which are used so uh, software based effects okay so these aren't hardware these are all software based effects and you can chain up to three effects together we have our shift function here which can access your different effects hold shift click the buttons oh, you can access good. different effects okay therefore you're not having to use your laptop or you know mm -hmm. touch on your laptop because yeah. it's not really the point of a controller mm -hmm. um moving down here we have four pad modes here well actually we have eight pad modes oh. we have the four standard ones with the hot cue we've got two new ones effects fade pad scratch which is a very hot oh, topic okay. at the minute yeah, yeah. and a sampler <laughs> If you hold shift, these will then turn into beat jump, roll, slicer, and trans. Right. Now down here 
is where things have changed from the SB2. So if we're looking at the SB2, we have the cue and play here, mm -hmm. the sync and the shift here. Now these on the four pads here. Yeah. Now we've 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 come away from this here and we've now got a designated cue and play button. We've got the sync button here, a vinyl with slip mode, and another thing that's changed from the SP2 is we, from, we, from the SP2 to the SP3 mm -hmm. is we now have auto loop function. So one click of that, you're opening up four beats, so uh, four bar auto. You loop. can use that in lay as well, yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. Now with us moving away from these pads here mm. um, and going more traditional route with your cue and play, we you can now access up to eight hot cues. So now we've got eight hot cues. Um, when we click effects fade, effect press play. We've got really nice effects fade, which from my, from me seeing this and using it, mm. if you're not into your effects yet and you're not really capable of using effects yet because they can be quite compl yeah, complicated yeah. there's no point in tricking an echo on there it sounds great mm. let's use it to transition tracks together mm. it's a really good way Hold up, sir. of starting to find out how you can use effects to mix new new yeah. new tracks in mm. your, your other tracks mm. in mm. and there's there's up to eight effects that effects fades on there Got the pad scratch mode, which we'll go into a little bit further mm -hmm. sooner, and then we've got the sampler mode here as well. So if you hold shift, you've also got a beat jump, roll, slicer, and trans, mm -hmm. and um, and yeah, these these are the new pad modes, wow, okay. mm. which I think is this is definitely more um, more professional layout than it was with the SB2 yeah, here, where they put those, where yeah. you put the pads here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Obviously, you know. DJs, especially controller DJs, have been managing the uh, sync button mm -hmm. controversy. Mm -hmm. And just as we were getting out of the woods, just as there was about to be peace, they've now brought in the <laughs> pad scratch <laughs> controversy. Yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, now um, before, at least in my time, you work up the layers, and there's certain things you can and can't do while you're DJing or mixing your music until you're on the next stage and the next stage. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Pioneer has seen fit to squash maybe, how long has Jazzy Jeff been DJing for now? I think you know. you're looking at, um, what was it, late 80s, mid 80s? Look at that, into four buttons. Yes. It's a bit strong, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> well, first things first, I'll go into pad scratch for, for views who don't know what it is yet. <laughs> so we've collaborated with DJ Jazzy Jeff. Um, I mean, if if you don't know who Jazzy Jeff is, you know, <laughs> get to know, get to know, <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's recorded some pad functions, pad features for us that we've added to the SB3. Mm -hmm. So, for example, now it sounds absolutely great if you ask me. <laughs> this is my personal view yeah, as you're yeah. asking. Mm -hmm. So we've got four here, uh, sorry, up to eight here, and each go more complex, more intricate with the scratching as you go up the pad mode. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're asking my view on the pad scratch mode. Yeah. I am going to reference something that Jazzy Jeff said when we we put this into into play. Yeah. Um, we I think. Um, I think yeah, it is quite a hot topic. You know, it was the same same problem we had with the sync function. Yeah, you're taking the creativity yeah. out of the hands of the DJ and into the computer. Yeah, but you are also opening up um, a new route or a branch to mm. introduce DJs that want to get into scratching, mm. but don't really know what it is or what it does or what it sounds like. Is that now, a good basis for a DJ to start from? Yes, so yeah, exactly. Not knowing yeah. what it is and where, you yeah. know, where to put in the scratch and how to use it in the mm. mix. You know? I think so, yeah. I mean, personally, mm. I, I know so because mm. let's say, for example, on the left deck, you have the pad scratch mode. Yeah. You you fire off a pad scratch. The right deck, you can then try and manipulate that scratch. But these are basic scratch pads. Mm. Yeah, so we've got the baby scratch, we've got yeah. a few cuts in there. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at when you were, you know, I mean, I don't know what age you were when you DJed. I think I was about 15, 16 when I was yeah. interested in it. I always was, always interested in being a scratch DJ. Mm. 
Um, you know, it's quite an expensive game to get into, especially at the age of 15. Yeah. Very expensive. Very. Even now, it's expensive yeah, I was gonna for say, me. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, with things like technology like the SB3, mm. you can introduce it to people that want to progress through the Scratch DJ route as opposed to maybe a different style of DJing. Mm. You know? And the fact that Dazzy Jeff has branded it and put his name on it, that's it's a big well, thing. Well, that makes the Scratches authentic. I would put it to you that if I was learning in this way, so I'm playing the scratches on the pads on one side and emulating it on these same yep. players on the other side, I'm learning to scratch on a digital controller. And these are not the biggest size players you can get. No. So just like you've laid out the pitch faders and everything, you know, to help somebody have an ecosystem all the way to the top, isn't these players gonna be crippling them? I mean, at best I'd learn maybe realistically to scratch on seven inches only because yeah. of how I learn and that would be lucky you know but using this this means I can't take into consideration needle drops um, managing a moving platter anything like that so I'm coming into my scratching now from a static electronic standpoint will I ever become a scratch DJ? I think again just to just to, just to recap what I've just said it's mm. a really good question you've just asked this is designed and and put in place to introduce people into scratch DJ. So know what to hear probably. Yeah. Now to, mm. So when you when you when, I mean obviously we're, we're, we're DJs ourselves. When you see scratch DJ, I do think of you know your your, your Jazzy Jeff, and mm. I've seen him live many of times, and yeah. I've seen what he can do on a pair of decks. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Where did he start out? Mm. You know, he started out listening to Baby Scratch. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah so you mean he's heard a start. Exactly. Mm. So you can you you can hear some of the stuff that he's put into the SB3. Mm. You can manipulate it, and I know it's seven inch platters, mm -hmm. but then it's only going to wait. You want more. That's it. And this is uh, you know we are introducing people into scratch DJ, and now you can progress through to being a scratch so DJ. So pioneers claiming itself. to kind of you're, you're igniting the thirst so to well, speak this <laughs> well you know you're igniting a dying, I mean, a dying breed that's how you want to put it I'm just saying that's just how it sounds <laughs> I think yeah. they you know mm. just to finalise the, the pad scratch mode mm. I personally definitely back it mm -hmm. um, anything like this to push people into the industry mm. and get DJs, you know, people wanting to DJ and wanting to scratch DJ is such a fantastic tr controller to, to work from, you know, it's such a great controller to base yourself mm. on. And the pad scratch mode. <laughs> it's fantastic, you know, really good to play around. Mm. And, you know, if I was a DJ, when I was 16 and this came out, I would definitely be buying it. I would definitely be checking out the patch scratch mode and I'd be able to hear what's going on in the sound, try and manipulate it, then you're getting more and more interested in the industry. Mm. And when it came to the shop, we played with it for about 25 minutes. A lot of, you know, amusement and merriment. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't yet imagine how it incorporate it into an actual real mix, but I understand the sounds are authentic. Yeah, it does scratch mm. the song. It's not just an effect on the top. No, so. again, yeah, it isn't mm. just an effect. It isn't mm. just a box sound effect. It yeah. will be scratching parts of the song that you set. Yeah. All right then, guys. Well, you've heard. Come into the shop. Have a go. <laughs> See if you like it, and you know, let us know your opinion.